Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. Okay, I'm Clary Slim. Today I'm going to share with you about a P6 topic. Um, it is actually energy that I'm sharing, but I would like to put energy and forces side by side because this is the two most challenging uh, topic for children. And uh, I'm sure some of you who has already learned that in school do find it very challenging as well, uh, how to differentiate each one from the other. So I'm putting them side by side so that you can see what exactly are the differences, okay? So if we talk about energy, we are talking about the measurement of the amount of energy that you have inside you. So if you can see, the difference between the energy and forces is that forces are mostly talking about things that has a direction involved. Energy does not have directions involved. What do I mean? So for example, if we talk about energy, we talk about kinetic energy, movement, anything that has got to do with movement, as long as something moved, there is kinetic energy involved because that is what is contained inside it. If it is a potential energy, it is stationary, it also measures what is inside of it. For example, you eat food. When you eat food, you put in energy into your body. And from there, that energy is converted into kinetic energy so that you can move your hands, you can move your head, you can move things, right? And then you can transfer this energy onto an object. So this is the latent energy, the inside energy, the whatever is inside that you are measuring. But if we talk about forces, forces has got to do with direction. It's either push or pull, right? Push or pull. So when we talk about forces, different subjects come up. For example, gravitational force. So where is the direction in this? The direction is between Earth, let's say, if it is talking about Earth, we're talking about the direction that Earth is pulling, let's say, a human downwards towards it. So there is a direction of coming down. So that is gravitational force. So even if, like, let's say, uh, the Sun's gravitational pull is keeping the Earth rotating around it. So that is also a pull. The pull will be direct, the direction from the Earth pulling towards the Sun. Okay, so when we talk about other forces, we also talk about, for example, weight, which is caused by the direction of pull towards Earth. And friction is the pull that is uh, in acting in opposite direction from whatever that you're pushing. Okay, so every time there is a push, there is a pull against it, that is the friction that we're talking about. So when we talk about forces, there is always a direction involved. But when we talk about energy, we are not talking about the direction, okay? I hope this is very clear for all of you. So when we talk about energy, okay, let me, let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so now we talk about energy. So when we talk about energy, we talk about two different forms of energy. We talk about the kinetic energy and the potential energy. So just now I mentioned kinetic energy, it's about the measurement of energy when in motion. So the faster an object, the greater the kinetic energy. So you can imagine because if you run fast, the faster you run, the more you hit against something, the more painful it becomes. Can you imagine that? So that is why the faster an object, the greater the kinetic energy. So kinetic energy of wind and running water is often used to do work. So these are all the key things that you need to know for this subject. Okay, so these are all key words. In I Love Learning, when we teach science, we don't try to teach you too much and it becomes very confusing. We teach you exactly the key words you need to know so that you know how to apply it onto your answer. Okay, so wind turbine is what makes use of the wind to generate electricity. Okay, so wind turbine and dam, dam makes use of the running water. So they 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 convert the gravitational potential energy in terms of the wind and the running water, it changes into kinetic energy, therefore producing electrical energy. Okay, so what about drill? Drill uses, for example, okay, it uses electrical potential energy because there is the electricity inside. So this electricity, before it does anything, it is definitely a potential energy. So once it starts turning that thing, motion is involved. The moment motion is involved, kinetic energy is produced. Okay, And it is a conversion from the electrical potential energy. 
So what is potential energy? Then potential energy is energy stored in an object due to its position. And it does change. It changes according to height and mass. So the higher the object, the greater is gravitational potential energy. So you can imagine the aeroplane in the sky has got more G GPE than the same one on the ground. So the higher the mass also, the, the higher the GPE. So you imagine the empty plane has less GPE than a plane full of passengers. So the mass matters too. So I think um, if you want to just put it in simple terms for you to understand, so you imagine something that drops from a higher height will fall with even more energy. That means uh, if you fall from one meter from the slide, uh, from a ladder, okay, one meter. You fall from the ladder, one meter down to the floor, it is painful. But if you fall from a, a three meters uh, ladder, it might be even more painful. Okay, you can imagine that you can you can use that as an example to understand what is the difference between gravitational potential energy. Okay, so the higher the object, the more the gravitational potential energy. Okay, so uh, chemical potential energy. So chemical potential energy is released by chemical reactions. Uh, it can be batteries, for example. So there's chemicals inside the batteries. So the chemical potential energy in batteries will be converted into electrical potential energy. So this is something that you need to remember. It can be food as well. For food, you eat the food. The food will produce, will have the potential, chemical potential energy in it. And therefore, after eating it, it gives you energy. And from there, you convert the chemical potential energy into kinetic energy. Okay. There is also the elastic potential energy. The more you pull, the more... The, the elastic potential energy and when you release it, it releases in the form of kinetic energy. Okay, for example, like stretched bow, bow and arrow, and a weighing machine. Okay, so electrical potential energy, we just uh, we, we mentioned above uh, the drill. Okay, so computers, calculators, refrigerators, all this converts electrical potential energy into kinetic energy into other forms of energy like light energy, sound energy. Okay. Other forms of energy include there is solar energy, light energy, electrical energy, sound energy, nuclear energy, heat energy, but they are not included in this chapter. Okay, heat is actually studied in P5. So energy can neither be created nor destroyed, it can only be changed, converted from one form to another. So heat energy is always produced when heat conversion takes place. Okay, so heat conversion, heat is like a byproduct, right? Okay, now let's take a look at some of the common questions that you will always see in your test papers, okay? So, in this one, Lizzie just bought a wound-up toy car as shown below. She gave the toy car several turns on its keys and noted down the distance it moved. So, she tabulated the results in the table below. So, what you will be able to see is that the more turns you get, the more the distance moved by the toy car, okay, in terms of centimeters here. So write out the main energy conversion in the toy car by the from the time Lizzie winds the key to the time the toy car stopped moving. So by the time she winds the key. So what is happening over there is that she is winding. So the main energy conversion from the time Lizzie winds the key, that means you can skip the potential energy and go straight to the kinetic energy because it's talking about her winding it already. Okay, so we will start from kinetic energy and then we will end off with the elastic potential energy. Why so? Because by the time you turn, you're transferring the energy of the kinetic potential energy to the spring and the spring will contain the kin elastic potential energy okay and then therefore after you release it the car moves and that will be kinetic energy so how would you write it it will be the kinetic energy from the winding and then it is converted into elastic potential energy and then it is converted into kinetic energy once again Okay, so when does the toy car have the greatest potential energy? At which point? It will be at the point when Lizzie turns all the way to the end before, at the point before she release. 
that will be the time of greatest potential energy so how would you write the answer out it will be at the instant when maximum number of turns uh, was given to the toy car before releasing the key for the toy car to move okay so that will be the answer let's try another one so this is a catapult common question for energy so you have to be able to recognize that this is an energy question because the question actually asks us where did Kelvin get the energy to pull the rubber ball backwards? So where did Kelvin get the energy? Kelvin, human being, gets the energy from food. Okay, so that's a very simple answer. So Kelvin got the energy from the food that he ate. So state the energy conversions from the point when the ball is released, the point where the ball was released, to the point when the ball hits the ground. So at the point where the ball is released, what is that? That means it's completely having the elastic potential energy already isn't it it's not asking you about how he is pulling so you don't have to start from kinetic it is from the point when the ball was released okay so that means he is pulling it holding it there so that energy will be the elastic potential energy okay and then at the point when he releases the ball shoots forward so there is movement therefore there is kinetic energy and if you are you, you are required to write down your own energy conversion formula. Usually, put in the heat energy and the sound energy because this will be the um, the the byproduct. Okay, in this case, when you heat it, uh, the ball hits against the, the the ground. So when it hits against the ground, friction will cause the heat energy, and then there will be a pop sound so that will be the sound energy most of the time you will need to put in this heat energy and sound energy so why is it that above this one we do not need to because it is asking you for energy conversion if you want to you can also put the sound energy and the heat energy behind over here okay the sound energy and the heat energy if you want to you will not be marked wrong in fact that is the perfect answer okay but if you don't have it usually it's fine but to be safe put it in okay so using the same setup without changing anything what can you do to increase the distance traveled by the rubber ball very simple you know what energy means you know what elastic potential energy means the more you pull to the back the more the kinetic energy will be released so how do you answer that and how do you explain this answer so basically you will need to say um, using the above setup so one can increase the stretch of the thick rubber band in order to increase the elastic potential energy that is stored therefore converting more kinetic energy of the rubber ball when released okay so where is the keyword over here so increasing the stretch of the rubber band will be one answer okay increase the stretch so that there will be so that's the keyword then uh, you increase the elastic potential energy that's another keyword okay therefore converting more kinetic energy that's another keyword so you will need this four factors inside in order to score your two marks right and these are all the scientific points that you have learned remember every time you answer this kind of question science question you need the science key concept that you have learned okay this one so this is a, a, a table 
yeah, a table and then this is a ruler. So you're using a ruler like a like a catapult in a way. So like a catapult means you will have the elastic potential energy again. So if the eraser flies off into the air as you she moved the finger away, state the energy conversions over here. Over here will be the elastic potential energy. Okay, so you're treating this as a catapult, like a eraser, like a like a rubber band. Right? Then uh, when the eraser flies, what happens? It will be kinetic energy. So that will be the two answers over there. So what can she do to increase the distance traveled by the eraser? Very simply, by pressing down the ruler even more. Because that will increase the elastic potential energy. Yes, put in all these keywords and you will get the answer correct. Right? So let's do the next question now. The diagram below shows the mechanism of a doorbell as shown over here. When the switch is closed, the hammer will strike the gong as shown over here. Okay, so what's happening? Describe and explain what will happen to the electromagnet when the hammer strikes the gong. Okay, so what's going on is that if the hammer strikes the gong, you will have to imagine that this is closed, right? So if you close the switch, it becomes a complete circuit over here. So what happens to electromagnet then? It will become a magnet. So when it is magnetized, this hammer will be attracted to hit the gong over here, therefore producing a sound. But what happens is after it leaves, the contact screw over here to hit the gong, there becomes an open circuit over here and this electromagnetism will therefore be sh shut off again because the circuit is now open. So this whole thing will happen again and again and again. So when it closes, the electromagnetism disappears, the hammer will go back again okay con contacting the contact screw and therefore magnetizing the whole electromagnet again and then this attracts again and then it opens up again and demagnetizes again and the whole process goes open and close and open and close and open and close that's how the bell rang right so how do you put that into english very simply okay we just go step by step huh? okay so part by part the electromagnet will become magnetic in this sense, right? Over here is explained. So the magnet, electromagnet will become magnetic, attracting this soft iron, causing the hammer to hit the gong. The contact screw over here will then become unable to touch the spring, causing it to be an open circuit, demagnetizing the electromagnet, therefore allowing the hammer to release once again. Okay, so this will be the keywords that you will need. So you need to continue over here. Therefore, releasing the hammer from the gong. Okay, and so this whole process repeats again and again, just like what I said just now. So this is how you explain. So there's two parts to this. So the first part will be in front, the contact screw. Uh, the magnet will be magnetized. Okay, so this is one part. And then the other part will be when the contact screw become unable to touch and demagnetizes the electromagnet. That will be the other part. So one mark here, another mark here. So what is the energy conversion that takes place when the switch is closed? Over here, so what will it be? From the battery, it will be the chemical potential energy followed by the electrical. So from the battery, so let me just write it here for you. From chemical potential energy, battery, it converts into electrical energy and then creating the motion from the gong that will then be as long as there's motion it is kinetic energy and therefore producing the sound if there is another box it will naturally be the heat energy once again because sound and heat energy always comes together but they don't have the box so no problem just leave it out okay heat energy is just a byproduct right okay let's go to the last question so Zina arranged an equal number of similar books in two identical bookshelves, A and B, as shown in the figure below. He tilted each bookshelf forward in the same manner of different angles and counted the number of books which dropped from them. So imagine this whole thing coming forward, okay, tilting this way. The bookshelf is tilting downwards this way with all the books over there. So when the angle that the shelf is tilted is at 10, the number of books that dropped from A is 0. But the number of books that drop from B is actually 2. Because I think you can see that obviously there is more books on top at the higher level of bookshelf B than A. And if you tilt it further, 
only two drop from A, six drop from B. You tilt it even more further, even further, only five drop from A and ten drop from B. So what is the relationship between the angle of the tilted bookshelf and the number of books dropped? I think you already know the answer. The more the angle of the tilted bookshelf is, the higher the number of books that dropped. Okay, so let me write down that for you. That would be the answer. So the greater the angle that the bookshelf is tilted, the more the number of books dropped. So what kind of energy do the books in bookshelf B possess? So over here, it's not just bookshelf B actually. Books in bookshelf A also possess the same energy. But over here, because it has a higher mass, remember, GPE, gravitational potential energy, the higher the mass, the more the GPE. Okay. So what kind of energy do the books the books in bookshelf B possess gravitational potential energy for both books actually okay so it's not just B but B has higher GPE so based on the above results give a reason why passengers are strongly discouraged to stand on the upper deck if the seats in the lower decks are not fully occupied so mass affects GPE remember so the higher the mass on top at the second level the higher the GPE that these passengers actually possess so imagine if they have a higher GPE, if the bus screeches to a halt, ee, so who will be thrown forward first? It will definitely be those at the top, right? So they will lose their balance even easier compared to if it is actually stable or rather the higher GPE at the bottom. Because if the higher GPE at the bottom, the bus wouldn't tilt forward so much and then the passengers upstairs will not be thrown forward so much. So you will have to answer it this way. As they possess more gravitational potential energy when standing on the upper deck of a double-decker bus, when the bus screeches to a halt, the people standing on the upper deck will have a greater tendency to fall and injure themselves. Therefore, they are not allowed to stand upstairs. Okay, so where is the keyword over here? The keyword will be, will be more gravitational potential energy. This has to be mentioned clearly. It is more upstairs. Okay, so they have a greater tendency to fall and injure themselves. This will be the two keywords that you need in your answer. Okay, I hope now you are very clear with the topic energy versus what is force. We'll do the next topic force in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel.